There's never been an update more anticipated by the community than the cave update. In response, Mojang revealed the upcoming Caves and Cliffs update, set to be fully released near the end of this year. And for the most part, that update as a whole has superseded our expectations. So what revisions and innovations will Minecraft's player base eagerly set its eyes upon next? We have yet to see a campaign anywhere as big or as long as the one for the cave update. But according to Shadow Priest Doc, a Russian YouTuber who attended this year's Mojang Creator Summit, a developer said it is one that people have been waiting for for a long time. So what could it be? My name is Cameron, this is Minecraft Ideas Academy, and let's get speculating. To many, the most obvious answer would be an end update. The oceans, villages, caves, and terrain of the overworld have been revised, and the nether has received a fresh coat of paint. That just leaves one dimension, right? After all, the last time the end received content was back in 1.9. But I'm not so sure if an end update is high priority for Mojang, or if it would even be given a dedicated update. According to Xbox Live Achievement statistics for Windows 10, Switch, and Android versions of Minecraft, only around 3% of players have ever visited the end. That roughly covers console, desktop, and mobile players, but we can't take this at face value. Achievements are only enabled when cheats are disabled, and turning inventory on or playing in creative mode counts as cheating for Xbox Live. Therefore, it isn't representative of the entire player base. If we're comparing dimensions, over four times as many players have entered the nether than the end. This is after the nether update, of course, which likely brought many more players into the dimension for the first time. An end update would fare similarly for the end, but there's no denying that it is far less accessible than the nether, merely because it is later in progression. This viewpoint seems to be backed up by King Bedogs, who stated on Twitter, The end may need more love, but it's late game piece of content. Early game content is more important to flesh out first, in my opinion. Does this mean that the end will never be updated? Of course not. But for it to have a greater impact, obstacles along the way need to be removed and improved first. To have a good chance of beating the Ender Dragon, a casual player will need some decently enchanted gear and some potions. Potions are fine, if a little unintuitive, but enchanting as a mechanic leaves much to be desired. XP is such a grindy resource to obtain, and the fact that only around 7 levels can be recovered after dying is a large demotivator. Although I spend a lot of time thinking and talking about Minecraft's design, I would consider myself a casual player. I've only defeated the Ender Dragon once in legitimate survival. And I made backups of my will before doing so, in case I died, or worse still, lost all my items to the void. Which I did, multiple times, before I finally bet it, made my way to an end city, and obtained my first Elytra. The path to the end doesn't need to be easier, but it could be more interesting. So perhaps the next update will be about Minecraft's magical systems. Consider what an odd resource XP is. Left over from Minecraft's primitive score system, Experience scales quadratically with levels, meaning the higher your level, the more experience needed to get to the next one. There is also no way to transfer it once gained, yet it is the primary resource in two very fundamental mid-game mechanics, enchanting and repairing. Enchanting has almost no way to choose or predict the enchantment applied, so players have to amass large quantities of XP in order to get what they want. They then must combine the enchantments on an anvil in a very particular way, so as to not inflate the XP cost, especially beyond their too expensive limit, if they want to get optimal tools. To top it off, with the many enchantment being so easy to get from villagers, anvils are seldom used for their original purpose, repairing. This entire system results in ethically dubious villager breeders, grindy experience farms, and convoluted gameplay. Some people may tolerate these systems, may even enjoy how strategies emerge from them, but the journey to mastering these techniques is a frustrating one. Not everyone wants to place and destroy workstations until they get a villager with the right enchantment, or spend all their time dragging items around in GUIs. There's also no proper progression for XP. If you want more powerful enchantments, just accumulate more so you can gamble it all away. To mitigate this, we could kill two phantoms with one arrow, and introduce a new system of items, called reagents, that would sway the enchantment table towards granting certain enchantments. Reagents could be anything from underutilized items, to new items most easily obtainable as loot and structures. While I feel the system addresses the bulk of the issue, it certainly isn't the be all and end all. Much more experimentation is needed. If you want to try it, I have good news! My friend Logic Tech Corp has actually turned this idea into a mod, which was recently released for 1.16. It's fully data driven too, so you can add, remove, and configure different reagents. It also allows you to change how much XP you retain and drop on death 
and reduces XP cost of repairing, which is offset by requiring a similar amount of iron ingots. This way, XP's significance is reduced. It still has importance, but it doesn't steal the spotlight. In general, if passively accumulated XP was enough to fulfill the average player's needs, then many more diverse and varied treasures could fill in the gap its diminished role would leave. This could be executed in many ways, the design space is ripe for exploration. A system overhaul does not an update make, however. So how could we expand this magical update concept? We can stay on the topic of experience points and turn to how it behaves within, say, Minecraft's death system. When you die, all of your XP disappears, save for 7 levels at most. All of your items are then thrown on the ground, potentially being destroyed by lava, and if not, they're en route to despawn within 5 minutes of their chunk being loaded. Moyang has mentioned that they want to keep the gameplay loop of returning to your items after dying, but that doesn't mean they can't remix other aspects of it. In a livestream a while back, game director Agnes Larson mentioned the lightning rod as an example of solving design issues with new gameplay. The lightning rod doesn't just redirect lightning, it also provides copper with the use and has a unique shape to build with. Perhaps we could apply this idea to Minecraft's death system, for example in the form of a mob that stores your items and XP. A game called Hollow Knight has a similar system. Upon death, a creature is spawned at the place you died, which you fight to retrieve your currency and restore your maximum spell capacity. Because of this more forgiving system, Hollow Knight can afford to be a lot harder than Minecraft. However, Hollow Knight is a game focused on combat and platforming, whereas Minecraft is all about survival and creativity. Therefore, while we can take inspiration from it, we'd need to adapt it to better fit into Minecraft's gameplay. And by we, I mean me and a few of my friends, Musicano, Snakeblock, and Rai. To cater to more playstyles, we decided it would be more suitable for this mod to be neutral. Perhaps when you initially return to the place you died, it would look happy and allow you to right click on it and take your items back, after which it would peacefully disappear. But if you'd wanted your XP back, which would be more likely if you were a combat focused player, then you could attack it, which would make it angry and drop some XP orbs with every hit it takes until it dies. This would also suit Minecraft's feel more, as a creature that is less objectively evil and more part of the natural life cycle allows for a broader range of possible interpretations, facilitating creativity and storytelling. At this point we could take the update in any amount of directions. If we settle on a theme of magic and death, suddenly we have a lot of possible features and ideas to consider. What's more, we actually have a hint towards such an update from Mojang. Some of you may remember that in my video about Quasilore, I mentioned that Mojang had told the translations community why they changed Zombie Pigman to Zombified Piglin. The gendered term was removed to explain the existence of baby piglins, as well as to not limit players' interpretation of their world. The rest remains a mystery, but the fact that it was renamed ahead of time suggests it was made to be consistent with the system being planned. According to Agnes, her job involves planning the direction of Minecraft five years into the future. We don't know how solid these plans are, but we can theorise based on their flexibility. For example, if Caves and Cliffs was planned five years before being announced, it was likely initially just a cave update, with Cliffs being added sometime after it was voted in. Therefore, these plans likely consist of just a theme, potential ideas, problems they want to solve, experiences they want to create, and topics for discussion. So let's say they have some sort of update planned that requires an advance nomenclature that differentiates between the process of making zombie villages and the process of making zombified piglins. They are already different mechanically, the former is caused by zombie homicide and the latter by leaving the nether. Besides a rethink of experience and all the systems it interacts with, what else could such an update add? I'd say anything relating to magic and monsters is fair game. The long awaited illusion that could be completed, new tombs and catacombs could house new monsters and be built from new blocks. Woodland mansions, desert and jungle pyramids, and nether fortresses could get a makeover. Archaeology, which was delayed past 1.18, could make its triumphant return. New weapons and abilities, such as my Totem of Withering idea, could round out the update's feature set, resulting in a similar scope to 1.14, medium sized with plenty of miscellaneous content. Mojang could also take this opportunity to tweak the existing undead. Rotten flesh could be given a use, wither skulls could be made less grindy to obtain, and the ever controversial phantom could be changed to spawn higher up like Jeb initially intended. And of course, we would find out the reason for that name change, perhaps with a fleshed out system of necromancy. This could turn Minecraft's undead from a cliched set of enemies into a force of nature with an implementation that feels uniquely Minecraft. Is something like this going to be announced at Minecraft Live? Probably not. Instead of looking to the future, 
I'd much prefer Mojang to look to the past and make an update from features on their backlog, such as archaeology and the losing candidates of the biome votes. Four animals, three new tree types, two entities, one plant, whatever termites end up being, and any associated features would be comparable to the amount of content a typical update would bring. Perhaps the deep dark loot could also be added then, if it isn't ready in time for 1.18. Internal changes and optimization were a large part of why Caves and Cliffs was delayed six months, but this hypothetical update would require far less of that, and it would also be less stressful for the developers. After that it would be nice if Mojang's public backlog was kept short. The mob votes don't add to it, but that approach has its own problems because it raises the stakes of voting. The mobs may be lost forever, or put back in the ideas pile. As a result, a lot of misinformation and opinions are spread around leading up to them, and it can be hard to decide which mob would end up being the best for the game. That's why I plan to release a video before Minecraft Live, where I give my thoughts on each of them in turn, in an effort to help people make more informed decisions. Anyway, those are my predictions for this year's Minecraft Live. Updates addressing large parts of the game, like the oceans, nether or caves, have made Minecraft far more fleshed out, so I think it's time to take a step back and target the areas that are less flashy but still very important. These areas could be consolidated into a single update, named Magic and Monsters, which could pave the way for a potential end update. Or the update could consist of features from their rather large backlog, which would also reduce the chances of delays and give the developers a much deserved breather. Regardless of what is announced though, I'm sure its features will be exciting and welcome additions to the game. So, what update would you like to see announced, and what would it have in it? Feel free to comment below. Are you watching this after Minecraft Live? Let me know if I got anything right, like last year. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you really like what I do, please consider supporting me via YouTube membership. This will be the new way to get a shout out in my videos, and it's very cheap. One tier even lets you hide secrets in my videos. Despite this change, I'm still a member of the Abnormals modding team, and people who pledge on the Patreon or Nitro Boost the Abnormals Discord server get access to beta builds of all of our mods, including unreleased ones. We also have a slew of existing vanilla star mods, which you can browse through on our website. If you want to hear about my thoughts on this year's mod vote, subscribe and hit the bell, and soon it should be up for you to enjoy. Links to other social media are in the description down below. Thank you all for watching, and now for the last time, here's all the shoutouts to your normal's patrons. Alicia, for the lols1131, Generosity, and Oneedon, A Wooden Crate, Chironon, Marcos, Miss Coloured, Forge Kid, Shock Micro, Swuff, Zoe Derps, Uber Driver, Andre, Gareth, Aurora Asta, Beebsy, Black Hatch Ghost, Buzz, Carmen, Cat Scythe and Shat Scythe, Coda1152, Epic Dead Bolt, 8HP, Panda Soda, David Young, Dolt H Haven, Dr. Zeos, Dugger King, Noodle Script, Ethan, Exoplanetary, Fresh R, Gex38, Harry, HPR, Jack Savage, Jalos, Humane, Jesse the Nobody, Ava, Quarkas here, Mass Mac Attack, Nox CGT, MC Polaris, Baguchan, Polpo, Racin, Jiblai, Samu32, Slabfred, Gene Cuisine, II Foxer, Thing W, Sabu Boto, Turtle, Barovish, Aiden, Sequel, Adele, Isolanium, Polyaqua, Azoptic Plays, Autumn Breeze, Mr. Bear, Bloops, Finch, BK1000, Cookies, Castlegrave, Beard Boy, Connor, Crispy Twig, Capo Joe, DD Ship, Diddleo3, Eddie Boy, Ninnyheim, Fish Everlasting, Flipseed, Jibby, Garrow, Haunted Chest, Hydro Squid, People McNugget, Not Jerlin, Anode, Kback, Caldera, Kyle, LB, GK Oliver, Ludocrypt, Matt Green, Forthwist, Oddspray, Peacekeep, Jetrox, Red Bamboo, Roggle, Sasquatch Mike, Shedma, Scully, Snorps, Spencer, Swib, Chadboy27, Tan, T Dark Shadow, Tempter Talk, The Grumpy Dragon, Tidal Wave, Sodden One, Waterdome13, Water Ore, and Wombatron.